Chapter 4, Crash Course. You're transfixed as all around you a herd of goats mills around. Mandy tries fruitlessly to wrangle them as Ryder looks on. Uh, Mandy, we don't have the space for goats right now. You gesture to a few that had escaped her grasp, and we're now wandering off in every direction. And they're kind of getting away. You took the words right out of my mouth, Belle. Ryder kneels to scoop up a kid chomping away at the ranch hands, azaleas before redirecting it towards the barn, Mandy shrugs. So I have to build them a pen. It can't be that hard. It is when you have to stop to wrangle the herd every five minutes. You haven't even planned a layout. Okay, so instead of sitting up on your high horse, help me then. I have my own work to do, Mandy. Hey, you guys. They're too caught up in their argument to hear you, and as tensions rise, your shoulders slowly creep up to your ears. The yelling reminds you of life with Cal, of the consistent tension you felt of every reason you wanted to leave. <clears throat> Break them up. But as a familiar urge to flee threatens to overtake you, you feel something new. I like it here. As much as I hate all the conflict, I don't want to leave. I have to say something. Heart pounding, you step between the two of them. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's a little early in the day for this much hostility, don't you think? It's because more compli it gets more complicated than it needs to be as usual. Ryder could turn a game of Scrabble into a deathmatch. That's because you don't know when to leave well enough alone. You did all this to make a point. Okay, I get it. You two are upset. But I can't handle all the yelling. Can we please just resolve this calmly? For a moment, silence fills over the three of you, and then Ryder looks to Mandy with a sigh. Ah, fine, I'll build a damn goat pen, but you're rounding up every single one of these goats. Fine by me. I'll just get Sergeant to help. Mandy purses her lips to let a shrill whistle, and an Australian cattle dog comes running. That another word, she turns in the direction of the main house with Sergeant at her heels, leaving you to follow Ryder to the barn. Somehow, I don't think all of that was over a goat pen. You want to talk about it? There's nothing to talk about. As far as I'm concerned, that was just another day at the Martinez Ranch. Yeah, I guess I must have missed the 4 a.m. or 4.30 a.m. Scream at your boss on orientation schedule. Ryder grabs a hammer, nails, and then grunts as he has the necessary boards down from a prepared stack of planks. Ryder, need a hand, cowboy. I hate to brag, but I've been told I'm a master at handling wood. He pauses, his darkened gaze flitting over you in the limited light. Is that right? Mm-hmm. All the better to help with you with your load. Grip the end of the boards, wrapping your hands firmly around them, running your hand across the grain. After everything that went down, you look like you could use a little relief. It's not what you think. Mandy's not half bad, her ideas are fine, it's just the execution that sucks. Together, you walk the planks out to the land in front of the barn, and Ryder lets them fall, nearly missing his foot. Building a goat pen is the last thing on a long list of crap I don't have time for today. And Mandy didn't take that into account? She never does. Mandy's a big picture kind of girl, and my day-to-day -day exists in fine lines. As Ryder stoops to hammer the first board into the ground, you crouch to join him. Well, since I'm the reason you got behind in the first place, why don't I help? After all, I don't mind getting hands-on. In fact, that's how I prefer it. You slip your hands over here, helping to hold the next plank steady as he bangs it into place as strong, sinewy fingers twitch under yours. No one can say you aren't willing to put in the work. You know it. Ryder eyes the pile of planks and the amount of building ahead of him with a sigh. Ah, I gotta admit, it would go a hell of a lot faster with your help. Assuming you don't mind a few hours of sweaty work by my side. It's what we do every day. 
The sweatier the better. Put me to work, boss man. What do you need first? A coffee at 4 30 in the morning. <clears throat> Ryder's ten shoulders begin to fall, and immediately you can see the relief in his eyes. Start dragging the planks over, put them in a circle, and if you uh, handle the layout, pounding them in should go uh, a lot faster. One fast pounding coming right up. With a wink, you get to work dragging the heavy planks and arranging them in the shape of a goat pen. Soon, you're winded. How on earth did Mandy think she could handle this on her own? She didn't, and that's a problem. She's got all the ideas, but the follow-through is always my responsibility. By the time you get the last plank in place, the sun is high in the sky, it's hot rays scorching down on both of you. Damn, I was hoping to beat the noonday sun. Wiping the sweat from his brow, he tugs his damp t-shirt over his head and his firm, well-shaped abs glisten as he tosses the shirt aside. Help to cool him down. Hang on, I know exactly what you need. Grab a towel, dunk it in the nearest water trough. Cold rivulets of water drip down your arms as you approach him with it. What's that for? Haven't you heard? It's important to hydrate both inside and out. You lift the towel to his neck, and as water cascades over his skin, you start wiping down the toned landscape of his shoulders and chest. God, that feels good. He breathes deep, his chest swelling as you bring the towel lower and lower down his stomach. It doesn't look half bad, either. Your fingers graze the waistband of his jeans before he catches your hands. Bell, <clears throat> there's still a lot of work to do, and I can't finish up faster. If uh, you nail in the crossbeams, how are you with a hammer? I'd be better with a tutorial. With a grunt, he passes you the hammer, and you line up the boards. It's not that difficult. Just hold them straight, anchor them with two nails on each end. You attempt to hold one end of the crossbeam up while you angle the hammer and swing. The nail went in crooked. It's because you weren't swinging it straight. Try again, only this time square your shoulders first. He moves in behind you, his powerful thighs bracing yours. You can practically feel the rumble of his chest as he breathes against you. I'm not sure I got the right stance. Is this right? You spread your legs until they match his, rubbing your ass enticingly against the, his bulge in his jeans. Bell, his hand drops to your hips, gripping them on either side and slowing your pace. I like the enthusiasm, but why don't you focus some of it on your hammer instead of mine? Well, there goes nothing. You rear back and hammer in the nail, delivering each blow with a heavy grunt. And with every sound you make, you feel Ryder grow behind you. Mm. The low rumble of his groan strokes the heat between your legs. As you melt against him, your panties dampen. All at once, he pulls back, and when he speaks, his voice is rough. Looks like you got it without me. I should, uh, <clears throat> get back to driving the posts. He leaves you with a hammer and picks up the rubber mallet. He puts his entire body into the swing, driving the wood into the ground. I could watch that man work all day. Distracted, you raise the hammer and bring it back down right onto your thumb. Ouch! What happened? Are you alright? Your thumb throbs hot, painful, but it doesn't look like you broke the skin. As Ryder approaches, the perfect remedy comes to you. It's fine, just need to watch what I'm doing. You ease your aching thumb with your mouth and give it a gentle suck. Instead of who I'd like to be doing. His eyes darken as they lock on your mouth. Solid advice. Let's get back to work. By the time the goat pen is finished, you feel tired and sore, but accomplished. That's cute. Wow, can't believe we actually built that. Ryder looks up from grabbing the debris just long enough to survey the build. It's a goat pen, Bill. Fit for keeping in goats, no more, no less. To you, maybe, but it's a big deal to me. He 
shake your head, wonder, you take it all in. I don't think I've ever created something from nothing before. As the realization occurs to you, your voice shakes and Ryder's attention snaps to you. Hey, are you alright? You look upset. I just... I can't stop thinking about what good team we make. Fights with Mandy and early morning construction, a dozen untamed goats, there's nothing we can't face, is there? He laughs and looks out of the project again, and this time you can see him trying to see it the way you do. Yeah, I guess not. Ryder bands to gather up his tools, his movements neat and unhurried. There's still a lot to get done today. Why don't you help Ma Mandy round up the goats while I check in with Melba and the girls? I almost forgot, but there's no way you can get them all milked and the stalls mucked out on your own. It wouldn't be the first time, but if you could get the goats settled in, it wouldn't. Uh, it would really save my ass. Your eyes land squarely on the seat of his jeans, the fabric stretching taut over the ass in question. If there's one worth saving, it's certainly yours. Consider it done. You find Mandy out in the pasture, surrounded by a small group of goats. Um, what's she doing out here? As you hurry over, she puts the middle and index finger of each hand in her mouth and whistles. Immediately, Sergeant herds three goats towards her, circling them to keep them together. <laughs> Good boy, Sarge. The dog circles the goats' ankles, driving them in one heavy mass towards the one at Mandy's feet. Looks like you two are making quick work of things. Oh, you'll be happy to hear that Ryder and I finished the goat pen in record time. Did you? Oh, that that's nice. She turns away from you to hide her dejected expression, but it's too late. I totally plan to build that pen by myself, you know. I, I never meant for it to fall on Ryder's plate. Then why did it? She whistles again, acting on instinct. Sergeant whips around and zooms forward, not stopping until he reaches her heels. Between you and me, I screwed up. The goats weren't supposed to get here until after I'd convinced him it was a good idea. But there's a heat wave coming in from the west, and to make sure they arrive safely, the farmer transported them early. Why bother trying to convince him if you knew you were going to do it anyway? Because things would be easier if Ryder backed me once in a while, but he never does. He hates my ideas. I'm sure that's not true. He'd be stupid not to back you. Gorgeous, keen business acumen. The man's a fool if he doesn't, uh, if he can't see what you bring to the table. You always know just what to say to put me in a good mood. Seeing the smile back on her face fills you with a warm, sudden glow. And it has the added benefit of being true. She reaches out and runs her hands down Sergeant's fluffy spine. Everyone thinks I'm a stubborn one on the ranch, but I've got nothing on Ryder. He actually thinks Sarge is only answers to him. But we know better, don't we, Sarge? It's a whistle to say. She flashes you a cheeky grin as she holds out her hands. Here, I'll show you. Sarge boy, let's dance. He watches the dog gets up on his hind legs and executes a neat two-step. I'll be damned. He's really good at that. Ryder would kill me if he knew. I taught Sarge that trick, but that's half the reason I did it. Wow, Mandy. It's hot to see you in control. I would have said something else. I can see you now. A whip in one hand, treats for a very good girl in the other. Keep this up and I'm going to start thinking you have a power kink. She flashes you a flirty wink that makes your muscles tense deep within. I'm starting to think you might be. Words come out of your mouth before you can stop them, but she just laughs. I wish I could always be as confident as I am when I'm around her. That doesn't stop you around Ryder. As Mandy scratches behind his ear, Sergeant's tail wags, wildly mirroring the happiness you feel inside. Being with her is so easy and fun. Mandy claps her hands, and as Sergeant snaps her attention, awaiting her next command, you nod appreciatively. 
he's really well trained. A ranch the size is only as good as its cattle dog. It's Archer's job to keep the herd together, keep them from, safe from predators, and he can also tell when one of the cows is sick or hurt. And he's so good at it, aren't you, boy? Well, that's some dog. As if in agreement, Sergeant butts his head up against your hand, the soft tufts of his fur feeling silk underneath your fingertips. He's smarter than most people know, and uh, he adapts to new commands pretty quick. In fact, I bet we could get him to learn a new command for, from you. If you wanted, they definitely come in handy around the ranch. You tell me what to do, and where to do it, and I'm in. This is gonna be super fun. Come on! Follow Mandy back to the main house and watch as she calls Sergeant to sit at her feet. Okay, what are we training first? Hold your horses. I'm not like one of those stuffy teachers who makes everything a slog. With me, a good time is always guaranteed. She shoots you a playful wink and your heart gets an erratic leap at the double entendre. I'm starting to see that for myself. Good, because the first thing we're going to go over is confidence. She snaps her fingers in front of Sergeant's nose, bringing him to immediate attention. You have to make him believe that you're the boss of him, no matter what. Mandy. Mm, this one's a tough one. We'll go with demonstrate for me. Let's just say I'm in charge, or I'm your charge. I've been disobedient or something. How would you remind me as boss? Well, first, I'll start with a blatant challenge. Without a warning, she hooks her fingers into your belt loop and pulls your hips flush to hers. A sudden jolt shocks your system, making your heart race and a space between your legs moist. Oh. Then, when you realize how much better it is to give it into the my will, I give you one more chance to submit. Mandy locks eyes with you, the intensity of within making her weak in the knees. Down, girl. Yes, ma'am. You gladly sink to your knees in front of her, and Sarge licks your face. I see the double entendre there. That's one lesson learned. She takes a few steps back, her eyes appraising everything about you, your clothes, expression, posture. Now you need to stand like you own this ranch and everything in it. Like you, then? As close as you can. It's all about being recognized as the alpha. Try standing with your legs spread and square in your shoulder. You try to do your best to follow her commands, but the dog doesn't seem to appreciate your efforts. Um, can I just give him a treat or something? Rewards are only for when he's earned it. Or when you have, drop puffing your chest out a little. Her eyes stray downward as she speaks, her gaze lingering over the tight fit of your shirt. This would go faster if you just positioned me how you want. I've always preferred a hands-on approach. In that case, I wouldn't want to disappoint you. She circles your eyes, wandering over every inch of your frame before stopping, mind you. Always keep things nice and tall. Mandy grips your shoulders, pulling them back, and as your chest protrudes out, her own grazes your back, her nipples tensed against yours. Or you. Oh. And don't forget your hips. Her hands stray down the sides of your body, skimming your breasts as they go. As Mandy grips your hips, centering them forward, you can't help but press your ass into hers. Like that? Better. With a light tisk, she steps around to your front. With a look, you feel down to your toes. She tips her finger under your chin and tilts it up. Now that's the look of a woman in charge. The moment you're in play, Sergeant's attitude begins to shift. That's right, boy. I'm in charge now. There's a whole new vocabulary to learn for herding dogs, so we'll start with an easy one. Sergeant Cast. 
Immediately, he rushes off to wrangle a pair of nearby goats before hurrying them to your side. Wow, what's cast mean? It's the word we use when we want Sarge to start rounding up the herd, but if I'm honest, the annotation is more important than the command. Um, how so? Well, when Sarge is standing in the middle of a herd of cows, he can't always make out the words we're saying, but he can recognize the tone. He grins in the way you're coming to realize is her mischief-making smile. Which means, with the right inflection, you could say just about anything. And he'll know what you mean. For example... Disco, Sarge. He dashes forward and rounds up and another few goats before depositing them at Mandy's feet. Holy crap. It worked. Told you. He's a really smart dog. Why don't you give it a try? Just make sure you pick one that's easy to remember. Uh, you know what, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll go by default. I just, my brain's not on the bed. Sorry, it's on vacation. I wish it was. The dog's ears prick, but he doesn't uh, make a move. Try again. Remember, you need to say it with confidence. You position yourself at the sergeant's head and adopt your commanding stance. Cast, Sarge. The dog creeps towards two goats lingering by the cow's corral, and as he looks back at you for reassurance, you follow. That's right, boy. You're doing it. But as soon as you speak, Sergeant gives up on trying to herd the goats and makes a mad dash for you and Mandy instead. What the... Sarge, you're supposed to be rounding up the cows, not us. Sarge nudges his nose into the back of your knees, propelling you forward into Mandy. You grab her for pulling her close as you try to break your fall. Cast! Cast! Mandy giggles when your words have no effect, and with a sharp whistle, she calls the dog off. Sorry, Belle. Sarge can be a very naughty boy sometimes. Sarge is... Mm, only half as naughty. For your sake, I hope that's not true. I'd hate to break you out of the habit. You lock eyes with Mandy, who your stomach tans eager to rise to the challenge. And for your sake? For my sake, I wish you would try me, but I don't have a problem getting more strict. Rough, rough. At Sarge's inclusion, you pull back, returning to the business at hand. All right, Sarge. Let's try that again, but with less humans and more goats. Cast. Clear on your intention, he surges forward, his tail and tongue moving in a constant frenzy as he runs circles around the rogue goats. <laughs> Got him. That's fantastic, Bill. I knew during the interview that you were going to end up being perfect for the job and for this place. The rest of the day is a lesson in hard work and exhaustion before you finally are able to shower and head to the kitchen for dinner. All this fresh air and exercise make me ravenous. I said I'd clean it up when I'm done. Relax. When was has telling someone to relax ever worked? This is true. The arguing grinds to a halt as soon as you step into the kitchen and you find the room in total disarray. Uh, did a tornado whip through her? Instead of answering you, she stirs furiously at something on the stove. Ryder grunts in annoyance. <sighs> You're witnessing another one of Mandy's great ideas in action. Behold her masterpiece. He whips a towel off the top of the nearby bowl to reveal a sharp, pungent liquid. What the hell is this? That's something. It's phase two of the Grand Goat Plan. You're looking at goat cheese being made before your very eyes. She's looking at a mess being made before her very eyes. Mandy politely ignores him and keeps stirring. Goat cheese. Never had it. And cheese is only the start. Pretty soon we can introduce goat soap, lotion, and all kinds of other artisanal goods. I guess there's a reason you're in charge. I never even considered that. It's a fantastic plan, 
if we forget the labor involved, the new machinery we'll need, and the complete overhaul of our barn. At least I'm trying new things. You're so afraid of change that you're still using a flip phone. If it ain't broke, why waste time fixing it or money? Especially when I have actual work to do around here. Hey, you do have to knock it off. Especially you. I mean, okay, okay. I can't really give Mandy crap because she's trying new things. Yeah, she's made a mess. But hopefully she cleans it up when she's done, right? That's how typically shit like this works. Um, especially you, Ryder. You press your hand against the hard wall of his chest. His heart gives an erratic leap under your touch. There's no need to get so worked up when you've been doing this as long as you have. Just breathe. I am breathing. Even though his words are a growl, you can feel him starting to relax. His muscles unclench as his heart resumes a normal pattern. You both need to take a step back and cool off. You're acting like children fighting over the last piece of pizza. I don't even like pizza. Oh, dude, I'm done. Nope. That's it. Book's over, folks. You would if I made it with goat cheese. I doubt that. Look, you both have a valid point. Maybe instead of overforcing them on each other, you could work together to make something amazing. I guess I could try it. If you stick around to keep us level, Belle. Agreed. Though I don't see how uh, anything amazing can come out of this mess. You think back to Dolly's words as you glance around the steaming disaster of a kitchen. I have a hunch you might be exactly what those two need. Maybe Dolly's right. The three of us could whip this place or mess into shape in no time, and maybe enjoy ourselves in the process. Look, Ryder, if you really want to know whether or not Manny's plan will work, you have to get involved instead of just booing from the sidelines. I never booed. <coughs> and Mandy, since most of the work falls to Ryder, you have to give him a heads up. You can't just dec make decrees and expect him to fall in line. I didn't think of it that way. Stand with your arms crossed as they share a guilty look. I guess I can give this funky goat cheese thing a chance. And I'm sorry I didn't warn you about getting the herd ahead of time. Not that you've done anything to deserve it lately. This is probably as close as to a truce as we're getting right now. Start rolling up your sleeves, prepare to tackle the kitchen <clears throat> and your two stubborn bosses. Okay, Mandy, where do you need us? Jar duty. These are already full of milk, so they just need to be sealed. As the three of you twist the lids on the jars, you fall into an easy rhythm with the two of them actually working together for a change. At this rate, we're going to need about 12 more cases of jars. I'll go grab some from storage. Good call. Bill, will, Bill, will you uh, help me strain this next batch of milk? How do you strain milk? See, I don't work on farms, so... Of course. You move to the sink and hold the bowl steady as Mandy starts pouring. So, about these goats. What brought all this on? You seem so sudden. One day we're herding cows and the neck goats are leaping all over the place. It probably feels sudden to you, but I've been thinking about it for a long time. She turns to you with a wistful air, suddenly looking a lot younger than she really is. Everyone thinks I'm impulsive, but that's because I've learned to keep things close. You study her as she works, and you can't help the overwhelming sense of awe that builds for her. Huh. Who knew there was a lot more to Mandy than meets the eye? Is she a transformer? What? <laughs> Sorry. I did all the research. Goats are good at taking care of themselves, but they really have low overhead. No, they don't. I call BS on that. Have you seen a goat? They will eat anything. Plus, introducing them to the ranch is a right way to mix things up without paying a ton of money. That seems reasonable to me. Yeah, but you're only the one. My dad refused to sign off on the plan. I figured if I could just show them what a good idea it is, that they'll have no choice but to come around. She lifts the vat of milk away. A huge stream splashes over her chest. Damn it! This is one of my favorite tops. Help her clean up. 
<clears throat> you grab a towel and start dabbing lightly at her collar. Hold still, I've got gotcha. you. Hurry, it's dripping. Oh, well then I should pause. She arches her back, giving you better access to the damp patch on her chest, and the holes in the weave make it easy for you to see every outline of her breasts underneath. Feel wet anywhere else? Mm -hmm. A little lower. She practically purrs as you slide the towel down from her neck to the enticing swell of her breasts. Then a door slams behind you, and you separate hastily, handing Mandy the towel. Okay, this should keep us covered for at least the next hour. Ah, you two. Now we get to do the fun part. There's a fun part in all this. Most normal people would run and go get a new t-shirt instead of going, I might make another mess while doing this. With me, there's always something to look forward to. Bell, will you give me a hand? Sure thing, boss lady. Yelp Mandy strain the pungent liquid through a sheet of cheesecloth and the creamy curds start to pile up before your eyes. Those lumps might not look right or look like much, but watch what happens when I do this. She definitely scoops the curds in her hands and shapes them together. It's a heart. Okay. Wow, it's kind of cute. I guess it's more eye-catching than what you usually see in the store. You gather up a handful of cheese and try to duplicate the shape. Uh, my little looks more like a kidney than a heart. I need help, Mandy. You're much better with your hands than me. Mm, I haven't had a complaint yet. She sidles up behind you, pillowing her breasts against your back as she slides her hands over yours. You want to cup the cheese gently. It's a lot more delicate than it looks. She purrs in your ear, breath whispering down your neck until you can barely remember to breathe. I had no idea cheese was so temperamental. Just treat it how you want to be treated and it'll fall in the line. With Mandy's help, you get the cheese curds into a shape that almost resembles a heart, though it's more difficult than you thought. Especially with Mandy's thighs pressed so close to mine. Between the three of you, you manage to shape enough cheese to use Mandy's batch of goat milk, and you look around with the milk spatter kitchen. Okay, now this place really is a mess. I'll get started on the dishes if you two carry those trays of hearts to the freezer to chill. I'll do anything to get out of dishes. Consider it done. He easily hoists two of the trays and heads down to the basement freezer, leaving you to grab the last one and follow behind. Downstairs, as Ryder pushes open the walk-in, you look over your shoulder to make sure you're out of earshot. So, about Mandy's plan, what do you uh, think about it now? I mean, it's obvious she did her research. She knows a ton about cheese making stuff. He rests his tray on a high shelf and takes yours and sets it on top of them. I just wish she'd run this stuff by me first. I might look like something scraped off a cowboy's boot, but I have ideas too. You meet his gaze, the intensity within sends a shiver running through you. Cold. Freezing. I just need a little bit more body heat. I don't know, suppose you happen to know someone who runs a little hot. I might know a guy. Without hesitation, he grips your waist and pulls you against him, the heat radiating off his body, warming you almost as much as the sudden intensity of his gaze. Anything else I can do to be of service, Bell? I can think of a dozen things, but we had better get back to Mandy before she sends out a search party. You return to find her standing over three samples of fresh, soft goat cheese. You've been holding on on us? More like waiting for you to be my guinea pigs. I need taste testers. The heart curds, I can understand, but do you really think people will pay money to eat this stuff? Don't tell me you've never heard uh, or had goat cheese before. Nope. Of course not, I eat cheddar cheese like a normal person. And vegetables? Are what food eats. Mmm, that's it. We're all doing a taste test. Pass around the samples, and on the count of three, you try it together. 
think this is the freshest goat cheese I've ever had. The tang is nice, but weird. Don't worry, country boy. I won't be upset if you stick to the basics. I think we've really got something, Mandy. Thanks, Belle. What about you, Ryder? You turn him watching as he savors the taste a little longer, and then until finally. I agree with Belle, this could be big, but before we go changing everything, you need to get the okay from your dads. That sounds like a deal to me. Welcome to the cheese business, y'all. Goat cheese. The next morning, you wake up to the sound of something scratching at your door. Oh, geez, what is it now? You strain your ears, waiting for the strange noise again. In the moment it sounds, you leap out of bed and rush to investigate. Ah, I got ya. You swing over the door, your fight or, f fight or flight instincts on alert, only to find... Sarge, what are you doing here? He darts inside, whining around your feet like a, you're a cow. He's trying to herd out the door, and reluctantly you go. Only for him to lead you to the barn inside, you see riders beat you there, and you hurry in. Ryder, what's going on? Why is Sarge so worked up? Because we have a serious problem, that's why. He gestures to an empty barn stall, and his eyebrows knit themselves together as he frowns. One of our new prized calves is missing. Huh, well. Thank God, at least the dog rounded me up. Am I supposed to go in the stall, or...? Mandy. What? Anyway, without further ado, <laughs> thanks for watching. Love your beautiful faces. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description. Plenty of things to check out there. Ways to support and ways to become more of an intricate part of this community and this family that we have here. Without further ado, once again, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace out.